Flightless seabirds are fascinating. After millions of years, they have lost a central characteristic of birds, flight. This oddity has prompted us to ask, what caused these birds to lose the ability to fly, and how has their anatomy evolved to accommodate their aquatic life? Upon researching, we found one main hypothesis for the loss of flight. Several studies correlated the loss of flight with the biomechanic trade-off between flying and diving. One specific study focuses on the energetic demands and body mass comparison between flight-able and flightless birds. The research found that increasing the body mass of the penguins was advantageous because diving required a higher O2 consumption. As the body mass increased, flying became energetically inefficient for seabirds. The first question we asked was how the forelimb anatomy changes in these flightless birds. To answer this question, we looked at the bone histology of the penguin taxa. The wandering albatross is the most related flying ancestor with the penguin taxa. Notice, this arm has a thin width. Additionally, the upper and lower arm are long and thin, and the hand is short. From this anatomy, the penguin taxa became differentiated. In the transition from air into sea, there are a few general trends that carry true throughout the penguin clade. Firstly, bone width increases along each bone in the forelimb. Secondly, the ratio of the humerus to the forearm and hand decreases. Before there were modern penguins, there was Waimanu, an extinct ancestral penguin. Fossil remains of Waimanu suggest that the penguin had lost the ability to fly. Notice, the wrist and hand are small, and the forearm and the humerus are large. Additionally, we start to see the increase of bone width. Now let's look at the most ancestral extant penguin, the emperor penguin. Notice the humerus to the rest of arm ratio is large for the penguin clade. Also, the bone width has increased significantly from Waimanu. As penguins continue to differentiate, the same trend continues. The arm width increases and the humerus shortens while the arms, carpals, and phalanges all elongate. This trend is observable in the next two penguin species. First, in the little penguin, and then in the African penguin. From the air to the sea, the penguin taxa has sacrificed their ability to fly to become better adapted to diving, as shown in the shortening of the humerus and the increasing width of the arm bones. Now let's watch the whole history of the penguin bone histology before our very eyes.